shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. one of the pastors on staff here. I just wanted y'all to do me a favor. Can y'all help me give it up for all of our first-time guests tonight? If you are a first-time guest with us, reach into that seat back pocket in front of you. You're going to see a card that looks like this. At the top of that card, it says, Get Connected. Take a few seconds, fill that card out, and on your way out the door, you're going to drop it off at the New Here tent. And when you do that, two very important things are going to happen. Number one, we have a gift for you. It's just our way of saying thank you for being here and celebrating with us tonight. Number two, more importantly, for every Get Connected card that we receive, we're going to donate $5 to a local charity. That local charity is able to take $5 and turn it into 50 meals for families right here in South Florida. So just by being here, taking a few seconds to fill out this card, you get a chance to make the difference in someone's lives. The other thing you may not know about Coastal, if, you knew, if you're new here, we love the local church. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to lift up some other local churches in our service in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we lift up the JSSC Church of Pompano. Father, they have a food pantry that they're doing every first and third Saturday. God, they're praying for supplies, for food to reach people. God, they're praying for opportunities to share your word in the message of Christ. Lord, we lift up the First Baptist Church of Weston. God, they're praying that your word would speak lively through their pastors and into their congregation so that they can reach out into the communities around them, God. God, use their hearts and their words and their mouths and everything they have to spread the word of your Savior. God, I just ask that you would prepare our hearts for our service today. Clear our minds, clear our hearts. Let us focus on you as we get prepared for your message. In your name we pray, amen. church. Let's continue singing this evening. And I am one of many countless testimonies saved by grace through faith not on my own. And all along this journey Lord you went before you were waiting there for me on mercy's road. So with thankfulness I bring a simple song. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. And every time I turn around, you were there to make a way. Yeah. 
heard your children then you hear your children now you are the same god you are the same god you answer prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same god you are the same god you will provide that you are spending part of your weekend here with us. I wanted to let you know about a few things that we have coming up here at Coastal. Calling all musicians and singers. Our worship team is looking to grow. So if you play an instrument or sing, we would love for you to come to an audition with us on Sunday, July 17th at 3 p.m. If interested, please email worship at coastalcommunity.tv to sign up. Are you ready to take your faith public? Coming up on July 23rd and 24th, we will be hosting water baptism after every service. This is a great time for you to make a public declaration of your faith, and we cannot wait to celebrate your decision with you. If you would like to be baptized, just head on over to our events page on our website at coastalcommunity.tv slash events. All right, guys, grab your pen and paper, and let's get ready to hear an incredible word from Pastor Shayla. <laughs> well, how are you guys doing this evening? All right, you're doing okay. You've been laying out in the sun too long. Might need a nap tonight, but that's cool. You know, I, I, so like they said, my name is Shayla. I'm actually Pastor TJ's wife. We get the honor and the privilege of leading Coastal Community Church, and it's always a joy to stand up here and to get to communicate God's word to you guys. You know, but for a minute, I just want to kind of give it up to some people that don't always get a whole lot of recognition here. And over the past couple of weeks, you've heard from Pastor Josh or Pastor Brian, Susie for, as our youth director, and we have an incredible staff here. And, you know, a lot of times TJ and I get, you know, the whatever, I don't know what, the, the accolades for some of those things, but it's not us. You know, it's really them and their hard work and what they do and their dedication. And I don't say it often enough, but we have like the A-team. So I just want to say thank you so much to the staff of Coastal for what you do. And our dream team, because there's no way this would happen <laughs> without you guys. If you're not on a dream team, if you're not serving here, jump in, get involved, and it will change your life forever. Well, we're going to dive in here real quick today. I'm titling my message called The Great Wait. Can everybody say that? The Great Wait. It's kind of a tongue twister if you say it too many times. But, you know, as I was preparing for this message, I was thinking about, you know, things in life 
There's a lot of things in life that really just don't make sense, right? Have you ever come up against those things that you're just like, I just don't get it? It just doesn't make any kind of sense to me. There's, there's a couple things in life that, that do this to me, like how come hot dog packs come in packs of 10, or, but hot dog buns only come in packs of eight? Makes no sense to me. No sense at all. Now, now how about this one? Why is fridge spelled with a D, but refrigerator isn't? See, all of you guys have been spelling one or the other wrong this whole time. Makes no sense to me. So another thing that doesn't make sense to me, how many of you guys go to McDonald's, you get a Big Mac, a large fry, a Sunday, and then you order a Diet Coke? <laughs> what is the Diet Coke for? It makes no sense to me. Ladies, why when we put our mascara on, can we do this? <laughs> Things in life that just make no sense. Okay, here, here's, here's the best one that makes, makes no sense to me. How come when we're talking to somebody that speaks another language, do we talk lower and louder, slower and louder, thinking they're going to understand? Makes no sense. My, my grandfather was a missionary in Honduras for many years, and I remember going to Honduras with my grandpa, and I remember getting stopped by these guys with machine guns, and my grandpa's like, I'll talk to him, and he's just talking slow and loud in English. And I'm like, Grandpa, they're not going to understand you. He goes, they know what I'm saying. It's like, they have guns. <laughs> you don't. But there's things in life that just make no sense at all sometimes. And I think that's true in like our everyday life, but it's really also true in our spiritual life. How many of you guys have walked through a season where you're like, God, this just doesn't make sense. I just can't figure this out. Man, it feels like I've been praying for this thing or waiting for this thing or believing for this thing. God, I just don't understand what's going on. I don't understand why it has to take this long. I don't understand why there's a delay in this prayer being answered. God, I don't understand. And there are things in life sometimes that just does, don't make sense. And to me, one of those things in my own spiritual life is like, God, I do not understand your timing. I just cannot figure it out for the life of me. And here's what I've realized is that we're never going to understand God's timing. We're never going to figure it out. We're never going to know. The Bible says his ways are not our ways. His timing is not our timing. We're never going to figure that out. And I think one of the most difficult things in life is to... Wait. Because what happens when somebody has to wait? What happens when there's a pause from the speaker? You're like, does she know what she's going to say yet? Next? I don't know. We get all these anxious thoughts, and that's what happens when we have to wait. Yeah. It's what happens in our relationship with God when we're praying for something, and we have to wait. And there's all of these things that begin to roll around inside of us. And I talk to so many people that are like, Shayla, I just don't understand God's timing. And they're discouraged, and they're frustrated because they're believing for something that hasn't yet happened. Can any of you guys relate to that? How many of you guys out there, you're believing for something, you're praying for something, and it hasn't quite happened in life yet? I mean, there's many people that you're waiting to conceive. And you just don't understand. Why isn't this happening the way I thought it would happen? Some of you guys, you're waiting on the financial breakthrough and you're going, God, wouldn't you, why won't you just show up? Can't you see my circumstances and my situation? God, I don't understand. Some of you guys are waiting on the miracle in your marriage and you're praying and you're crying out and you just don't understand. God, why haven't you answered this yet? Or maybe the issue in your health that you're praying for healing, but it just hasn't quite come yet. You know, I think so many times life is, is kind of like, like this and we're standing at one end and the things that we want is at the other end and all we're doing is seeing this huge gap between where we are and the answer on the other side. And so many of us are just so focused on, man, how far or how long or how difficult is it going to be to ever get there? Is that thing ever going to come? And we're so focused on this thing and it's begun to consume our life. 
And many times it seems like what we're praying for is just so far off. You know, recently I read a book that was a business book and a leadership book. But as I was reading it, I was like, oh my gosh, there are so many spiritual principles that are in this book. And it was called The Gap and the Gain. And I think what so many of us do spiritually is, is we stand back and we see this gap between our answered prayer, the things that we hope for, the things that we believe for, and all we can see is the gap between here and there. And what I want to talk to you guys about today is maybe a different approach to waiting for God's answers in our life, for waiting for God to answer that prayer. So what do we do in that waiting season? What do we do when it seems like the answer is so far off or we're so confused or we're anxiety ridden because the answer just hasn't come yet? You know, and waiting is actually a common theme in the Bible. See, Sarah had to wait 40 years to conceive a son. Noah, that guy was building a boat forever and waiting for rain. Who knows how long he was waiting. I'm sure he's like, God, you better come through on this because I'm going to look crazy building this boat. You think about Joseph was in prison for many years, waiting on the answer to his prayer. Jesus took 30 years for him to get into ministry. David, he was, he was said, anointed to be king when he was 15 years old, but he had to wait until he was 30 to see that promise actually come through. See, waiting is this constant theme in the Bible, and it's evident in all kinds of scripture, but what we live in this society that is this instant culture, right? We just think, I, I want it, so I gotta have it now. This instant microwave kind of society, we got instant popcorn, instant coffee, instant oatmeal, all this nasty, instant isn't good. If you've had instant coffee, you're like, yes, hello, you're right. But we live in this, this society that has trained us to think, when I want it, it should be here right now. Yeah. And God doesn't work that way. And there's a process that God has when we're in this waiting season. And in the Bible, waiting has a different purpose and a process than we would naturally think. You know, in Isaiah 40, 31, it says this, but those who wait for the Lord will what? Gain new strength. Those who wait will gain strength. Now, the Hebrew word for wait is actually this word quava, which means plate, and not like a plate you would eat something off of. But plate actually means the intertwining of hair on a rope. It's like braiding something. It's like strengthening something. See, this waiting thing is this strengthening. It's this intertwining. It's not a passive thing. It means that you are intertwining God into every space of your life. While you are waiting, you are intertwining God. You are intertwining his peace. You are intertwining a relationship with him. You are intertwining him into your season of waiting that will begin to bring strength because every breath is a prayer. Every breath is a praise. I am intertwining God into every moment that I am waiting right here to get over there and I am strengthening myself along the way. See, that kind of waiting brings new strength. So how do we wait while gaining strength while we're waiting? And today I want to give you three keys to waiting well. And the first one is this. You have to wait actively. You have to wait actively. Now, active waiting takes on a different posture than passive waiting. Active waiting, often, hey, have you guys ever, I don't know about you, but most of the time waiting, I, I equate it to like getting an oil change, right? And you're sitting there and you're like, oh my gosh, don't these people know I have stuff to do? Like, when are they going to be done? Or sitting at a doctor's office, what, you said my appointment was at 8 a.m. and it's 10.30 now. And all I can do is sit here. And so many of us approach the waiting of like, God, there's this thing that I want, but I'm just sitting here and I'm just waiting for you to come through. Yeah. 
But it's actually this very active thing that God is asking us to do and intertwining these things into our life. And what happens when we end up just passively waiting, when we just sit here and we're waiting for God to answer the prayer or we're waiting for God to to move, what happens is we end up to kind of get to this complaining nature. Maybe we're even filled with cynicism or doubt. God, are you really going to do that? Did you really say that? Because we're just sitting here passively allowing time to pass. And all we're focused on is the gap between where we are and where we want to be or the answer that we want on the other side. And we get this cynical nature. And this frustrated nature is like, God, are you really going to do this? God, I'm I'm mad and I'm frustrated. Are you really who you said you were going to be? But when we take this active posture, you know what happens, you know, if we go back and say that word in the Bible when it says in in Isaiah 40, 31, it says those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. And if that, that strength is that intertwining of God, here's what happens to so many of us is we do this waiting alone by ourselves. We've been doing this passive waiting. What happens is the frustration comes and we just end up breaking. And that weight is breaking our spirit. It's breaking who we are. It's discouraging us. It is giving us this place of like frustration because we're just sitting here and it's just beating us up because we're doing it by ourselves. But you know what the Bible actually says in Ecclesiastes 4.12, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And when we are actively waiting for something, we are working at it. You know what? We're weaving one thing into the next thing, into the next thing, and we're intertwining God into every space of our life. It's like, have you ever braided somebody's hair? It's braiding something, and when you braid something and intertwine something, it becomes strengthened to the point where you can't break this. That's what it means when we actively wait for something. You know, TJ and I, you guys have have probably heard this story, you know much of our story, but you know that we were, we were never able to have biological children. And that was a season that was really, really difficult for us. Because I felt like in that season, I was standing over here and I was hoping and I was praying and I was believing that God was gonna get me to that place where he blessed us with our own child. But months went by and years went by. And you know, in that season, it, was so, it would be so easy to focus on the fact of what I didn't have. It would be so easy to look around and to go, well, now I gotta go to this baby shower. And now I gotta go to this thing and it's just reminding me of the thing that I don't have. And I could have sat there and stared at this big, huge gap and this big, huge hole that I felt was in my life. But you know what I choose, cho- chose to do in that moment is I was like, you know what I do have? I have, the, I have a husband that loves me. And you know what, God, I believe that you can do this over here. And so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start strengthening my marriage. I'm going to start building into my relationships. I'm going to start strengthening my relationship with God. I'm going to work on what I can work on. I'm going to be actively waiting for this thing to happen, but I'm going to strengthen my marriage because all the parents know out there, as soon as you have that baby, boy, your marriage is tough. (laughs) So while you're waiting and while you're believing that God can do this, how are you strengthening the things that he has placed in your life? How are you intertwining your relationship with God? How are you allowing him to strengthen those things in your life that become so strong that the waiting is not going to break you? You know, in 1 Timothy 4, 15, he's talking about these spiritual disciplines. He says, practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so what people can see your progress. When people looked at my life, they could look and go, man, Shayla and TJ have an incredible marriage. Why? Because I wasn't focused on the gap of what I didn't have. I was focused on the gain that it was producing in my life. And when we choose to focus on the right things, when we choose to actively wait, it produces something. Because here's what I've realized in life. Waiting time is not wasted time. 
Waiting time is not wasted time. And some of you guys need to hear this. You've been waiting to find the one. You've been sitting in your singleness for so long and you're constantly reminded of what you don't have. But can I just tell you something? Waiting time is not wasted time. If you choose to wait actively in your life. You know, number two is wait with gratefulness. We have to wait with gratefulness. See, what happens when we wait with gratefulness is that gratefulness begins to put us in the game. Because so many times, again, we go back to, man, there's this huge gap between where I am and the outcome that I want. But you know what waiting with gratefulness does? It causes you to turn around and to see the faithfulness of God. It causes you to turn around and go, man, look how far I've come in this season. Look how strong my marriage is in this season. And I am not focused on what I don't have. I'm focused on the amazing things that God has given me in this time. God, I thank you that you have me in this church today. God, I thank you that I'm not who I used to be. But, but God, I know you're making me to be something better. And we are just living with this attitude of gratefulness and thankfulness. And I think so many people, gratefulness has become a lost art. When was the last time you just sat back and instead of looking this way, you looked this way? You said, God, I'm thankful for these kids that you've given me. God, I'm thankful that I have a job. It might not be the one that I want, but God, I'm going to work this job and I'm thankful for it. You know, a lot of times, the very things that we're complaining about are the things that somebody else is praying for. And if we can begin to look at our life and look at the gain that we've experienced in our life and the gain that God has brought us and the things that God has brought us to, we can turn around and go, God, I believe that you'll do it again. I don't even have to worry about it because I've seen your past faithfulness. And so I don't have to focus on the gap. I'm going to focus on the gain and we choose to train our brain to look at things differently. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. With thanksgiving for the things that you've already done, God, I know that you will do this. We have to live with this attitude of thankfulness. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, give thanks in all circumstances, in everything. God, I'm not where I want to be. But Lord, I'm thankful I'm not who I used to be. And we live with this attitude of thankfulness because that is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That you would live with a thankful mindset because you know that God is going to do what he said he was going to do. See, gratefulness for the, the blessings in your life is how we begin to see the deep gain that we've experienced. You know, I want you, some of you parents to think about this with your kids. Because I, I think all the time as parents, we can look at our kids and we can see where we want them to be. We can see the behavior we want them to have. We can see the attitude we want them to take. And a lot of times I think we're so focused on the gap between where they are and where we want them to be that we can miss out on the gain that they've experienced in their life. And as parents, what if we just turned around for a minute and said, man, how far have they come? Can I just celebrate them? Can I just encourage them? And I bet you they move closer and closer because of your words of encouragement, because of your gratefulness, because of identifying not the gap, but the gain in their life. And that's what we do when we're waiting for the answered prayer. As we go back and we look with gratefulness, we shift our focus off of the gap and what we don't have and we put this attitude of thankfulness that moves us into this just grateful heart, this grateful attitude. Moves us into this grateful mindset that allows us to see the good 
that God is doing and it encourages us to keep trusting, which is what we need to do next, is we need to wait with trust. See, here's what I, I see a lot of people doing. I think a lot of people focus on the miracle or the thing that they want God to do instead of just focusing on God. And what waiting with trust does is it moves your focus off of what you want and onto the one that can do it. Instead of looking at the miracle, you look at the one that can perform the miracle. Because do you know what happens in, in this process of waiting? Do you know what God is doing? He, he's strengthening you. He's shaping you. So that when you get to that place, you're the person he wants you to be. And it might not make sense right now. But so many times the process is the point. And God's just going, listen, I, I know you want that, but I just, I just need you to trust me. I just need you to let me strengthen you right now. I just need you to, to keep going in this process. I, I know you can't see what is happening over here, but I just need you to trust me. Just keep working on this part. And this trust is not easy because we are a control-ridden society. And it's so hard to su surrender control or what we think it should be. But we have to say in moments where we're standing here and we see this gap is, God, I trust you. God, I know that you're good. I've, I've seen it before. God, I trust that you did it before and you'll do it again. And we have to live in this attitude of trust. In 1 Corinthians 13, 12, it says this, we can see and understand only a little about God now. As if we are appearing as reflection in a poor mirror. Basically, he's saying, you don't get it, people. But someday we're going to see him in his completeness face to face. And now all I know is hazy and blurred. But then I will see everything clearly, just as clearly as God sees into my heart right now. Basically, he's saying, listen, I need you to trust me because what you see is not what I see. You know, there's this great illustration in the business world or in life in general, and it's this idea of success. They're going to throw a graphic up here. You know, so many of us think that success looks like this. Just this straight line. Yep, God, I have a, a prayer, and you are going to lead me to the answer. But the journey really looks like this. But do you know what's crazy? This is what produces the strength. Right. This is what produces the character. This is what produces the man and woman that will lead you to be able to sustain this. Because it is about the process. And the process might seem messy and it might seem like you're taking curves all over here and you don't understand why there's a delay, but God is doing something in the delay. He's building your character. He's building your strength. He's writing your story so that you will be everything that he's called you to be on the other side. See, we get so focused on the destination that sometimes we forget that it's really about the journey of God making us into the people, the men and the women that he's called us to be. And listen, you don't become somebody new overnight. It's a process. And the goal is that we trust the process, that we trust God, that he is good, and that he can see things way better than we can see them. Man, I'm so thankful God didn't answer some of the prayers that I prayed when I was younger. Oh, we have to trust him. We have to focus. You know, in Proverbs 19, 21, it says this. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. See, we all have these hopes and these plans. We all have these things that are in our heart, and we're like, God, I need you to get me here, and we're going on this journey. You know, I remember starting Coastal, almost 13 years ago. TJ and I moved to this area knowing no one. 
And I remember setting out thinking, we're going to be awesome at this. Like, this is just going to success. We were wrong. You know, Coastal today looks nothing like we thought it would look like in the beginning. It looks so much better than what we could have pictured at that time. And I'm so thankful that along the way, that we just said, God, this, this is our vision. This is what we feel like we want to do, but Lord, we trust you. And then you know what God did? He went to work on us. Because the leaders and the people and the marriage and, that we have today is because of that long journey to success. Where every single day we were intertwining our life with his. When we were intertwining our story and we were allowing God to strengthen places of our life. And I can tell you today that when you take your focus off of the gap, off of what you don't have, and I'm not saying that you don't continue to pray for that because you do. Make your petitions known to God with thanksgiving that you're working while you're waiting. You know, I believe that there's so many people out there that struggle in this space in life. And you're waiting. But what God's really saying right now is, listen, I see you. And will you trust me? Because one day, just like that scripture says, we're going to get on this side and we're going to go, I see it now. Haven't you done that in life? You got to the other side and you're like, now I get it. That's why they say hindsight's 2020, right? Because this journey of waiting isn't because God wants you to wait for all of these things is because he's trying to take you down this process that is refining you and defining you to be who he's called you to be. I want to go back to this verse in Isaiah because there's so much more that God wants to do in this waiting. So if we continue on in that verse, it says, but those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength and he will renew their power he will lift their wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow tired. You guys, when we wait and we begin to intertwine our life, he wants to renew us. He wants to strengthen us. He wants to lift us up. He wants to carry those things for us. But if we keep looking at the gap instead of turning around and going, God, I'm intertwining my life with yours. I'm not focused on the things I don't have, but God, I'm focused on you. And some of you guys, you've been trying to do it on your own, and you're breaking. You feel like life's crushing you. You've been defeated. You've been depleted of your strength. And everywhere you look, all you can see is this gap. And I want to encourage you today. You can have the strength that you need. You can wait well in the season and God can renew your strength and he can energize you and he can strengthen you in the season. And one of the ways that you do that is maybe, maybe you've never experienced a relationship with God, with somebody that has looked down, that the Bible says he knew you before you were born. And maybe you've never experienced a relationship with a God that wants to bring the strength in this peace because you've been looking around and you've been just trying to do it on your own and life has just been tearing you up. And maybe today you need to make that decision to go, you know what? I want to begin to intertwine my life with Jesus. 
because I've done it long enough on my own. And I've fallen short. And I need help today. And you know, it's all you have to do is something so simple is we just surrender. So we just say, God, I, I need your help. I want to invite you into my situation. I want to invite you into my life because I need your strength. And I need your help. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe that's you out there. Maybe you've been walking this journey and you've been trying to do it yourself. And maybe at one point you had a relationship with God, but man, that was a long time ago and you've walked away and you've tried to do it by yourself again. And today you're saying, Shayla, I need to invite Jesus into my life. Maybe for the first time or maybe the first time in a long time. If that's you, I'd love to be able to pray for you. And on the count of three, if you would just slip up your hand, I would love to know who you are, to know who I'm praying for tonight. So on the count of three, one, two, three, if you'll just slip up your hand. Yes, I see you. One, two, three, yes, four, yes, five, six, yes. Anybody else? Seven, yes. Eight, yes. If you just repeat in your heart as I pray out loud, Jesus, today I surrender. God, I can't do this on my own anymore. Lord, I invite you into my life. Tonight I choose to intertwine my life with your life. God, and I surrender. Lord, I pray that you would begin to heal me of my past. Give me strength for my present and a hope for my future. God, I choose to trust you today. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.